Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to do another human rainbow video. Haven't done one of those in a while, and I'm going to alter a stamp for a boy to make it African American hair. And this is what the stamp looked like in the first place. And I kind of stamped a whole bunch of them so I could practice different skin tones and hair. And you can see on the right hand side, I altered the shape of the hair. I did that with the stamp in place because it was black so I could cover that up. But if you're gonna do what I wanna do in today's video, you need to mask that off in some fashion. You can either use a post-it note or something, or what I did was get the ink on the stamp and then wipe off that top portion so I could draw in my own head. Now on a stamp like this and on any most any stamp you're not going to get kind of normal proportions shall I say. The eyes on any head are not this low on the, the shape of the whole thing but I'm kind of looking at the original stamp to see how tall that hair goes and how big that head is intended to be so that I kind of make my head the proper proportions which is important and I started with a really light marker so I could adjust it as needed and if you're going to do this make the hair go in further, don't make it as poofy outy as you think it should be, so you have room to expand it a little bit more. And you might want to do what I did, which is you know stamp it a bunch of times and practice it so you can kind of get the the feel of how large you want it to be. Now if you're trying to make it look like a specific person, the shape of the head and the amount of hair is gonna differ. So you'll need to adjust that based on, on the kind of person that you're trying to color. So I put another ear on the other side because it just felt like it needed it. And now I'm gonna start putting in the flesh tones. Notice that I did put the brown underneath of where the hair is gonna go because depending on how close cropped the hair is, you're not gonna just see black hair. You're gonna see some brown skin in between. So you wanna have at least some of that brown color underneath. And I'm making him kind of a really high forehead because I was looking at a picture online to figure out kind of what sort of haircut I wanted to have and the child in the picture had a really wide large tall forehead so I started building my colors to do that and I'm just using all the E3s to make my skin tones there's a lot of different skin tone kinds of combinations you can use and again practice on another sheet and just try all your different browns and see what works you can use some purples and that sort of thing in the shadows if you're bold and then I softened the edges that are going to go into the hair before I started on the hair. Now the hair, I'm starting with a W6 and that's going to be the places where the, the, the hair is not really super thick because the child had kind of on both sides a little bit of lightish sort of hair so you can see a lot more of the skin tone and then it got darker on the top. So it's not going to go completely black usually unless the hair is really, really dense. But on a really short close cropped hair like this you're gonna have that that brown showing through so i'm going back in with my e35 to just kind of blend some of that out and make sure that i don't end up with a harsh line where the hair starts and stops because if you look at anybody's scalp if you can actually see their scalp if they don't have any bangs hanging down you'll notice that they actually don't have a really sharp line it's it's a very soft line where the the hair begins and then I'm going in with my W8 to add the darker parts at the top. And I'm doing it by putting dots in there, just like I did with a W6. If you start putting like big swashes of marker on there, it's gonna be like a helmet. <laughs> you don't want the poor child to be wearing a helmet. But if I'm doing this gingerly the way I am, I have the ability to adapt some of this. And I, I didn't want to adapt so that I had those really dark W8 dots going toward the skin. I wanted the W6 to be the part that's kind of moving in toward the skin on that on the line where the hair turns into the face because I don't want that to be super sharp so I'm just going to do it with a lighter color and then I can also go in with the brown and soften it again to make sure I get that really soft blend that soft edge. Doing all this this way as well not having a hard line on the outside lets me kind of adjust that hair later on too if I decide I want to add more hair or something but I also don't have a hard outside edge because it's hard to draw that kind of a shape it would be a really fuzzy sort of line and so I'm just going to kind of leave it as is and color the rest of the image and while I do I thought I would tell you about an idea that I shared recently over on the MFT channel because it kind of goes with um, what I'm going to do with this card 
I have been looking for people to give my cards to because I send out a lot of cards to my students and to my patrons and that sort of thing to random people that comment on my blog and that kind of stuff. But I also like to do something else with them because I have so many cards. I make a lot. And there are cards like this where I don't know anybody who's got an African-American child that would look like this. And I want this to go to somebody who is going to see that picture and go, oh, that looks like me. That's, that's me in there. So what I've been doing is looking for people to give a pack of cards to that they can use to write to somebody else. You know, it's kind of like the old style Operation Write Home days, but since the Operation Write Home isn't in existence, we can do this one-on-one -on -one in our communities. Now, I gave a pack of cards recently to my aunt. My aunt is without a computer, so she wants to keep in touch with all of her kids and grandkids and great-grandkids and everything. So I sent her a pack of cards and I included a lot of kids' cards because I don't send out kids' cards, but I like to make them. So I sent those to her so that she could be able to use them. This one is going to be one of the ones that I'm going to put in the pack that's going to go to our food bank at my church. Because every once in a while, like for Mother's Day, they just have done this thing where they ask people to donate items that a mom would want and that they could give to moms as a special treat in addition to the food that they're giving them. But, you know, what else could a mom use? And like, this is perfect for that. So I want to put together a, a little rack of cards to put out when they come and pick up their food that they can pick up a birthday card for their kid or something. And this allows me to use a lot of my cards that I wouldn't use for me necessarily, but I, I like to color things like this. I like to experiment with that. So I encourage you to think of places in your life where there are people that might have a need for a card or two. And that can be anything from, like, like I said, a food bank. It could be a, a ministry in a church, of course. But it could also just be somebody who's living in a nursing home or somebody who's in the hospital for an extended period and they want to keep in touch with their friends and their family. Take them a little pack of cards. I mean, there's lots of places that you can do some good with the cards that you're making and the cards that you're creating to give to someone else who can use them. And it also allows you the opportunity to make things that you don't really have anybody to send them to, but it'd be really fun to make the card anyway. So that's what I have been kind of keeping my eyes open for lately. Now, when you do animal cards, you can of course give them to your local shelter and they can either give them away or sell them as fundraisers, that kind of thing. But also think about just individuals that you know of or even individuals that somebody else knows. If you don't know anybody in that circumstance, ask on your Facebook page, say, does anybody know a person who's in a nursing home who needs some cards? and who could use some because I have, you know, X kind of cards. I have a lot of thank you cards. I have a lot of birthday cards, whatever it is. And just say, does anybody know anybody that I could send a half a dozen cards to in the mail? And you could, you know, do it in your community or you can send them in the mail to that person and just do it anonymously. Don't hashtag it. Don't get crazy I'm trying to get credit for doing something good. Just do something good with your cards. And I think that would be really an awesome way that we as crafters can make a difference in our world. So this card's gonna go in my box for the food pantry, and I hope that you will take the idea and run with it and go figure out your way to do it in your community with the kinds of cards that you wanna make. All right, I will see you guys later. Have a great, great day. Click the like button if you enjoy the video. The supplies are all linked down below as well as the blog, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.